Hello everybody, I am doing this video from the back seat of my parents' car. So as I'm sure you've gathered, I do live with my parents like a uh, soon to be 35 year old loser. Um, my mom um, has said a couple times, do you have to let them know that you live with your parents? Haven't you mom? Yes. Um, I don't like that fact, but uh, getting back up on your feet after being an addict for nine or not 19 years, 19 is when I started using, um, after almost 16 years of using, um, has been uh, not so easy. And I'm um, on the front doorstep of getting back out on my own. So um, one step at a time. So. Um, we're all in agreement that I need to get the F out of the house. And so uh, we are getting there. Uh, I decided to um, make today's video about um, time spent with my grandparents, specifically with my grandma, since we're on um, my, we're on our way to my grandma's funeral, which is on Saturday the 29th. Um, I have spent many a great summers and um, uh, in time with my grandma. She was an avid crocheter. I have a wonderful um, crocheted afghan that I got when I graduated from uh, high school. She did it for all of us grandkids um, when we graduated high school. And she uh, told me, what colors do you want? And I was like, I want all blue. Because blue is my favorite color. And I mean, I love blue. I, I love blue. If you look at my yarn stash, uh, probably 60% of it is blue. And, um, or at least it's variegated and it has blue in it. And um, she was like, okay, I'll do blue and I'm gonna throw in an accent color. I was like, sure, do whatever you want. And uh, she made it extra long because I'm six foot four. She made everybody else's a very uniform size, but she made mine extra long and I love it. Um, I don't use it because I'm very fearful of it getting damaged. So it's actually, <laughs> this is terrible. It's in a tub in the attic um, I used to display it, uh, and an ex when Mark and I were together, we displayed it over uh, uh, a curtain rod uh, up against, like up on the wall when you went up the stairs, because um, he liked it a lot. And we were, I was like, I don't want to use it. I don't want anything to happen to it because I had an afghan that my sister made, and my dog jumped up on the bed and he had crazy long nails, and he wouldn't let us cut them. It's like if you touched him with those clippers, he would freak that fuck out. Sorry, mom. I know you don't like it. I'll say F. Okay. Mom doesn't like it when I cuss. Mostly the F bomb. She says shit like it's A and or the. And she says it in front of my nieces and nephews, but I can't say the F word. Um, I... Uh, oh, but he jumped up on to that afghan and he tore it like in the middle, like just, just tore the, the F out of it. But it was fixed. And my mom tried to fix it and it just, she didn't have the same stitches that my sister did. So it, it just didn't look the same. And so I stopped using it. Um, but, um, almost everybody in my family crochets, all the women and me. My aunt crochets, my mom crochets, she also knits, my oldest sister crochet and knits, crochets and knits, and my other sister crochets and knits. Uh, no, she just crochets. Um, but my grandma crocheted, and she's the one who taught my mom. My mom taught me and all my sisters. Um, but my grandma was a wonderful lady, and I'm going to really miss her. Um, she always loved whenever we'd come to visit, and I would pull out my uh, crochet stuff and sit and crochet with her. Um, all my cousins would come around to the house whenever we'd be visiting and they'd see me crocheting and they'd be envious that they didn't know how to do it. And I showed my cousin Daria, I was like, oh, it's simple. You just, you hold your tension like this and you pull the loop through and then you just keep doing that. She goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so, um, you know, when you've been doing something so long, um, it's not, you think about it being easy, but it's 
uh, to some people it's not. Like when I was in rehab, I tried to teach two different people how to crochet, and one kind of started to pick it up, but I think she didn't realize what the uh, how big of an endeavor it was, and she um, quit learning. And there was another girl who was a painter, and she was a really good painter. And she was like, will you teach me to crochet? I, she sat with me for five minutes, and then she goes, um, I'm, I'll be right back. She never came back. <laughs> But um, I, uh, I really loved my grandma. One year, um, we went for Christmas, and uh, this is the Ann Carroll story. Um, my parents wanted us to go for Christmas, and we went down in, on a weekend, and my parents had to go back to work the next week, so they dropped us off. And so we got to spend time with uh, my grandparents, and my Aunt Carol was there. And Aunt Carol did not play. Um, we, I was maybe six. Is that does that sound about right, Mom and Dad? Um, so, um, and this is also the peanut butter and jelly story, right? Is that the same time? I don't, you, remember, I don't remember that story. The sandwiches. That was earlier. That was earlier. Okay, never mind. But this. We will not let my Aunt Carol forget this. Um, we thought, yay, Christmas vacation. We're gonna spend it with Grandma and Grandpa and Aunt Carol, and we're gonna have, you know, nothing to do except for have fun. Aunt Carol made us clean Grandma and Grandpa's house. All these years later, she claims she asked us to like pick up the pillows. No, we had to clean, vacuum, dust, like, I mean, manual labor. And let me tell you what, grandma and grandpa's house, effing dirty. I'm pretty sure before that point, it hadn't been cleaned in like 10 years. They maybe vacuumed, they maybe fluffed pillows, like Aunt Carol claims that's all we had to do. <laughs> but no, we did manual labor. And I was six, which means Aaron was 14. That's my oldest sister. So, or 14. She was 15. She could do this stuff. I was six. Like, all I could do was maybe take out the trash, but it's South Dakota in the middle of winter. If I went outside, I could freeze to death in 10 steps. So, um, I, all I recall about that Christmas, really, was that Aunt Carol made us do manual labor. Mom and Dad left us, and we had to do chores. Oh, too bad. Oh, too bad, you say? <laughs> it was... It's not that bright anymore. It was... It was... And it was... Is that... Oh, that my dad's playing the world's smallest violin for me. It was... Record player. What? Record player. Oh, that's a record player. This is the violin. That's the violin? Yeah. Okay. Um, but going to South Dakota always made for the best road trips. Because uh, we lived in southwestern Oklahoma. And we always had a van. Uh, we had this big white van that had captain seats in the front. And a, uh, a, a big... Um, what? Oh, what? A big bench in the back, like, uh, that made into a bed. So Scott and I always had to sit in the back while the girls got to sit in the front in the nice chairs. And um, it was just, it was just, it was always fun. I mean, as long as we got along. I mean, one time I remember Scott and I, um, we were bickering about something. And I held up a blanket that my grandma on my dad's side, because the, the grandma who died was on my mom's side. Uh, my, that my grandma on my dad's side had made for me. It was like a little baby Afghan, not, uh, not Afghan, uh, quilt, quilts. a quilt. Um, and I, I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I was stupid enough to say, my blanket will protect me. And I held it up between us. And what did my brother do but punch through the blanket and deck me? He didn't hit me in the face, but he hit me somewhere in my body and he hit me hard. So it was, um, it, it was always fun and interesting. And 
you know, there were always the, the like I said, there were the fights, but what was always so fun is the, um, my parents had recorded, um, 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 you know, the things, vinyls, uh, onto, um, cassettes, and we listened to those, so we had the Smothers Brothers, Bill Cosby, before we found out that he was a rapist, um, so back then he was still wholesome, um, we had the Mamas and the Papas, um, who else did we have? Race, no, that, well, that wasn't recorded from vinyl. What else do we have from vinyl? That's probably, okay. But we listened to Ray Stevens. And, I mean, that's, and, but we had like a big variety of all of those artists. And that's what we listened to. I mean, I probably know almost every single Mamas and Papas song by memory still. I know every set that uh, the Smothers Brothers have ever done, and it probably just take a couple key words from, from one of their bits for me to recite it from memory. Um, you know, it's just, and I know Bill Cosby is a terrible rapist and he did awful things, but that man was funny. <laughs> and, um, and while he did terrible things, at least most of his comedy was pretty wholesome, which is very the opposite of what you can say about some comedy today. And um, I'm not saying that what he did is okay. I'm not um, saying anything, um, but he's not, um, for the time he was very clean. And unfortunately he was doing very terrible things during that time as well. So. Um, speaking of that, I just watched the movie Bombshell here in the car, and I highly suggest it. Um, it was about uh, Bill O'Reilly and um, um, Roger, I can't remember his last name, from Fox News, and uh, Megan, what's her face from Fox News. It was about the um, sexual harassment case that happened, and it was really, really good. And what's funny is there is a case in there that's referenced against Bill O'Reilly, um, and the uh, plaintiff um, is a woman that I know from when I lived in St. Louis. And um, Bill O'Reilly sexually harassed her, and I knew her when I was like 21, and um, she could not tell us anything about the case because she was under um, uh, non-disclosure. Non -disclosure. Thank you, Dad. Um, and all she, like we finally one night when she was drunk, we just know that she had won like $25 million out of a case from when she worked at Fox. And one night when she was drunk, we finally got it out of her that it was Bill O'Reilly. And um, cause she had worked on his show, she was a producer. And uh, we were like, oh my God, Bill O'Reilly sexually harassed She's like, and they can't tell you what happened. She's like, I could lose all my money. So the fact that I told you that, like, please take it to the grave. And um, they referred to it in the movie. Um, and I was so shocked. I was like, I know her. I've been drunk with her. Um, she's told me some things that she's done. That like, <laughs> like I was just, I was, she has, she's done good things. She's done some very good things since getting that money. Like she put a foundation in St. Louis for women who have been sexually um, assaulted and everything. She put the money to good use. Um, but she basically said that since her career was ruined, she's gonna live off that money and was doing good things with the money. She bought herself a nice house and was just surrounding herself with good people. Um, and I've shot champagne corks out of the back of a um, cougar, um, um, out of a cougar, a jaguar, um, leaving a play I was in with her. So she's seen me naked. I was I was in a play where I was naked on stage. So um, it was <laughs> it was really awesome to watch that movie. Don't shake your head at me, Dad. You didn't have to see it. <laughs> um, but anyways. Um, Enough about that. We're talking about my grandma. I can't believe I brought up rape and uh, me popping champagne corks out of the window with uh, 
with a woman while I'm supposed to be talking about my grandma. Um, see, this is what my videos are like, mom and dad. I, I, it's, it's like that, sh that drag queen show that I watch called, um, um, they, they try to talk about shopping, but one episode there, it's the episode was shopping and they end up talking about poop the whole time. So, um, <laughs> it does. And that's, it's so fun having ADHD because you never know what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> what's that? Oh yeah, that's, well no, I mean, as the viewer, I I think, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm entertaining to watch, because I don't know, but people seem to like it, I get good comments. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to have a breakaway conversation with my mom, um, but sorry, there was something on my phone, but I got this new stand, it doesn't seem to jiggle as bad, I mean, I know we're in the car, but if I was on that old one, it would be like, oh! Sorry, Derek, I did get a new one. I saw this at Walmart when I was going to get new headphones. And um, it like clips onto stuff and it's really nice. Um, anyway, I, um, my grandmother comes from a good legacy of good women. And um, she strangely only had three girls, but like six boys. <laughs> And, um, unfortunately, my mom's side of the family, we're not as close as my dad's side of the family as we are on my dad's side. Um, I know dad's side has a reunion every two years. I was just about to say that, mom. Don't get ahead of me. So, when, before I started the video, I told my mom, please don't talk to me while I'm making the video, but she's breaking that rule. But I already broke the rule by talking to them, so it's only fair that she's talking to me now. But on my dad's side, we have a family reunion every two years, um, because my dad's side, he's the youngest of 14, and I'm the last and 32nd grandchild of, well, of course, 32, because I just said 32nd. Um, that would, you know, um, I would only go to the stand. If I said I was the... Um, the 32nd grandchild and last and 32nd grandchild of 33, that would, you know, raise some questions. Um, but um, it's a very large family and we're all spread out all over the U.S. Um, and so if we want to see each other, we have to have a family reunion. My mom's side of the family, um, for the most part, besides my aunt, um, everybody has stayed in South Dakota. A couple have branched off into um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, but that's still like a three hour drive from where everybody lives in South Dakota. So I don't count that. They can all still see their parents within a three hour drive. Um, my parents my, moved uh, from South Dakota um, because my dad's job transferred them. So we were the only ones not living in South Dakota besides my Aunt Carol who lived in Phoenix. So we were kind of like the outsiders of the family for ever. I still feel like an outsider to the family. Um, you know, so I, I wasn't as close to my grandma as a lot of my cousins were. I almost said are. Um, so like a lot of my cousins whenever after she died, we're putting pictures of them with grandma on Facebook. And I was like, I don't know that I have a photo with just me and grandma. I didn't look back through Facebook, but I don't, I might, we might have a group photo of all of us, but I mean, they were putting photos of them with grandma and I'm very envious of that. I didn't get to know her like a lot of them did. You know, I only got to see her like a couple, I, probably throughout my life. I have maybe saw her once a year to, to, and for 20 years. And then within the last 15 years, I've maybe seen her twice a year. You know, and I, it's, I, I relish every moment of it. I. I I'm very happy for the time we've spent together, but I am jealous of my cousins. Um, and I, my fondest memory of my grandma is from my oldest sister, Erin's wedding. 
my mom's probably gonna get really mad that I'm sharing this. Um, my sister Erin got married and she didn't have an open bar at her wedding. She just had champagne. And the, when the wedding was over, my dad and, which uncle dad? Doug. Doug, okay, I thought it was Doug. My dad and my uh, uncle Doug, who's my godfather, were in charge of putting the champagne into uh, my brother-in-law Matthew's car. Um, and when they were putting the champagne in the car, oops, like half the champagne ended up in my dad's car. <laughs> yeah. And so we get back to the hotel and we had ourselves a champagne party and we all got obliterated. And um, I said, I was 20 at the time, by the way, so I couldn't drink at the reception. Um, without getting glares from my mother. I know I drink a little bit, but I remember getting eyes from my mother and I sh set the champagne glass down. Um, but we get back to the hotel and all bets were off because everybody was getting obliterated. So, um, I, and we were just drinking from the bottle too. I mean, we were totally high class. Like we weren't, we weren't getting cups. There were no cups. We were drinking straight from the bottle and, um, I was sitting on the bed next to my grandma and someone handed her the champagne bottle and she took a swig and then she handed it to me and I took a swig and then we just handed it back and forth for like maybe three or four or five drinks each and she put her arm around me and she gave me a big hug and then we handed it off and oh my god that was so fun like I never thought in my entire life I would be drinking champagne from the bottle with my grandmother and oh my god that was a blast and then when Aaron and Matthew got back from their honeymoon and found out that we stole all this like half the champagne they were pissed oh my god were they pissed but we had ourselves a really good time and you know what even our my hoity toity aunt and uncle um they I don't think they minded that that they were kind of slumming it with the rest of us and drinking from the bottle <laughs> they were they were happy to celebrate the uh the wedding with with everybody and have a good time but also they're um they're they're big drinkers so i think they were just happy to get to have some alcohol <laughs> everybody, had a good time. everybody had a good time but that was the first time i i really drank champagne like i I'd had i had tasted champagne before at that time but i'd never like drank champagne before like that much, like, I mean, I probably easily drink over a bottle of champagne myself. It's like, there, we drank a lot of champagne. I woke up at three in the morning, or sometime in the middle, like really, we, we went to bed late, but like, I woke up much later in the night. Um, I was sleeping on one of those rolly beds and I swear to God, I could not swallow. There was no moisture in my throat, in my mouth, like nothing. And luckily my Scott's, my Scott, my brother Scott, his friend, was that Preston or Ryan? I think it was Ryan, yeah. Um, had brought a bunch of Gatorade because he was, he's one of those guys who, even though he's not an athlete, he still drinks Gatorade a lot. And I went, I got a Gatorade, chugged it, went to the bathroom sink, filled it up with water, chugged that, and I went and laid back down, and I was just like, holy crap, I'm never drinking sh that much champagne at one time. But it was also, it was a brute, so it was, like, it wasn't even, like, it was, it was not champagne that you should drink like that. Like, it was, it's like a champagne where you drink a glass or two, and then you're done. It's toasting champagne. It's toasting champagne, like my mom just said. So, it was... It was not smart on all of our accounts, but we were wanting to have a party afterwards and the town that we were in, uh, Bentonville, Arkansas, does not, is, is a dry county. So um, that was our only way to have an after party after the wedding. So um, that moment with my grandma is, um, it's well, an alcoholic moment um, is still one of my, fondest memories with my grandma um so it's I know it's kind of a, a sick twisted one but uh it was it was so fun I 
I really relish it just because I, I kind of felt like a grown up for the first time. Um, getting to do something and see my grandma in a different light. It's weird when you when you see someone a certain way, like, you know, up to that point, like I spent the summers at my grandma's house and she would sit and crochet and we'd go to church, you know, and then here I am seeing her drink champagne from the bottle and she hands it to me, you know, and we go and we sh share it back and forth. You know, that's, that's not something that you think would ever happen with your grandma who probably at that time would see it's my fifth, 15 years ago, she was 73. Does that sound right? She was 73. So that's nothing that you'd ever think would ever, you'd ever do with your grandma. So it's, it was, it was a good time. Fun times were had by all. Nobody died. Nobody had to drive because we were all staying in our hotel. So it was, it was good times. Um, I will really miss her. I will carry on the legacy of crocheting for the rest of my life. Assuming that my hand injury allows me to, um, I was um, at my physical therapist um, yesterday and we were making some discoveries and she um, thinks it might actually be carpal tunnel. Um, I was supposed to have a follow up with my doc, with my sports medicine doctor tomorrow, which I had to cancel and I need to reschedule. Remind me to do that after I get done with this mom. Um, but she said to talk to him about it. I've had carpal tunnel tests and they said it wasn't, but she said something that she discovered whenever we were working on my hand, she was massaging places and where I was saying there was pain, she was saying that, that she goes, that led her to believe it could be carpal tunnel, which that's awesome. I, that's exactly what I, you know, want to, want to have is just another surgery, which would mean more physical therapy and, you know, <sighs> more time away from crocheting, which, you know, that's nothing new. So I am, um, just wanting this to be over. Um, but if it helps, then it helps. So, um, I just, don't want to have to stop crocheting altogether because that would break my heart. Um, and I um, started talking to that boy that I talked about in my live stream and he's considering letting me teach him how to crochet via Skype or FaceTime. So um, there's that. I can always spread the joy of crochet. Um, so I'm... Um, very happy to pass on my grandmother's legacy of crochet. Even though it was my mom who taught me, but it was my grandmother who taught her. So there's a lot of ways I could honor my grandmother and um, be a, a uh, conduit of her, of her skills. Um, how much longer till York? What's that? 10 minutes? Okay. Um, I think I think I'm going to cut it off here. I can't think of anything else I can really say about her. She was a tough old bird all the way up to the end. Um, I'm just happy she's out of pain. Uh, she'll be missed. And um, I just hope my grandpa um, can figure out a way to live without her because um, I've always been a lot closer with, with my grandpa. I know that's terrible to say, but I can't lose him too because he's the only person in my family who calls me Drew. Everybody else calls me Andrew and I hate it. <laughs> my, sorry, that's a lie. Yes, my nieces and nephews call me Uncle Drew and I love that. But all my cousins, aunts and uncles, my parents, my siblings, they all call me Andrew. Now, when my friends from high school or college um, call me Andrew. I forgive that because they know me as Andrew. Um, ow, up. I call all my friends that from when I met them, I call them by the name that I know them as. I have a friend named Alonzo and he started going by AJ and I still call him Alonzo because he's freaking Alonzo. I don't know AJ. Who the F is AJ? So I understand that. But, um, by that same coin, 
Drew is a um, derivative of the name Andrew, and it's my preferred way of going by Andrew, but my whole family is like, no, F that, I'll call you Andrew. So, I've almost been going by Drew as long as I went by Andrew. You should be used to it by now. 19. Anyways, sorry, sorry you had to witness that little fight. Um, although, last year for my birthday, my mom wrote uh, in parentheses, A-N, and then a capital D-R-E-W on my birthday card. So, I thought we were making progress, but I think she's regressed a little bit. You are? I'm Drew in your phone? No way! Then why don't you call me Drew? Huh. So whenever you use Siri, you say Siri call Drew? So then it would just be like one step further to say, hey Drew, when you take out the trash. Just call my name like you're talking to Siri. Okay. I know you like Andrew, but I like Drew. I know, but like, you know how cousin Jessie liked Jessie when she was young, but her name was Jessica. They called her Jessie. Because she liked it. I know, but I didn't know that I liked Drew because I didn't think about Drew being a derivative of Andrew. I tried Andy when I was seven. I tried it for a day and kids made fun of me and so I hated it. Never call me Andy. Not you guys, I'm talking to the camera. Okay, I can no, if you call, no mom, you call me Andy, I'm gonna call you Sandy. My mom hates being called Sandy. Yes, you do. You said it's only okay when the Hubbards call you Sandy. Um, cousin Dee Dee calls, calls you Aunt Sandy. So, um, quick fill in. I'm sorry you had to witness a conversation between me and my parents. I don't know if you could hear my mom or not. Um, I started going by Drew when I worked at a Cracker Barrel. Um, we had opened the store brand new, so they overstaffed. Like, like every server only had two tables. Um, and you've been to a Cracker Barrel, there's a lot of tables. So, um, and there were a lot of people with similar, similar sounding names to me. Um, there were, there was an Andrea, an Angela, an Angie, I think that's it. And I went by Andrew. And they would call your name when your food was up and the wait line was full of people. Because nobody was ever out looking at their tables because everybody was waiting for their food. So um, it was like hard to fight through to get to your food. So I thought I'd hear my name and I'd be like, because I would be like at least out where I could eye my tables. So I think I'd hear my food. So I'd fight through the crowd and I'd get up there and be like, no, we said Angela. They'd be like, ah. So then I would go back out and then I think I'd hear my food. They'd be like, no, we said Andrea. And, I, and after like two or three days of that, I like I got up there and I yelled above the crowd. I was like, all right, I'm gonna start writing Drew on my tickets. Everybody call me Drew. So they made me a new name tag. It said Drew. And I started going by Drew just at work. And, but when I made friends with people at work, they all called me Drew. We'd hang out outside of work and they'd call me Drew. And I was like, you know what? I like this. I like going by Drew. And I just, you know, yeah, I, I went with it. I would introduce myself to new people as Drew. And I, I, I really liked it. And my mom goes, like the first time I, I, I kind of brought it up, I was like, no one's gonna call you Drew. And then we went to visit my grandparents one time and my grandpa goes, you know, Drew. And then I realized my grandpa has called me Drew my entire life. Cause I remember him saying that every time he has ever talked to me, 
He goes, you know, Drew, and then he'll say something. It doesn't matter what it is, but he's always addressed me as Drew my entire life. So that is a lie. My grandpa calls me Drew, but the rest of my family call me Andrew. But my grandpa calls me Drew. So he, he unknowingly gave me um, a shortened, not nickname, because it's an actual name, but you know what I mean. It's like a nickname. He gave me a little little shortened name that was that only he does and he did that my I mean I remember being seven or eight now and and him doing that you know Drew and um, it's he's an awesome he's an awesome man he uh, oh cut it off all right I have to st we're stopping now so anyways um, thank you for listening to me ramble about uh, my grandma crocheting and talking and dealing with talking to my parents. Um, I will post this uh, later today. It's right now. It's about 2 p.m. Central Time. I'll probably have to wait and post this once we have uh, better uh, cell reception. I'm uh, currently just recording this on my phone. But um, thank you for being awesome, everybody. I love that you love my videos and. Uh, I'll keep them coming. I'm going to do a live stream on Friday. I don't know what time yet. Um, what time do we have stuff going on on Friday? In the evening? Okay, I was going to do it in the afternoon. Um, I'll do it maybe around 2 or 3 in the afternoon. I'll, I'll, I'll solidify a time later and I'll probably post it in my video tomorrow. So I just want people like Sabrina. I know Sabrina wants to be able to watch the live feed because I know she's in Europe. Or, or at least across the pond somewhere. I asked her... And I didn't get an answer back, but I, I think she's maybe in England. Um, so anyways, I will, uh, whoa, sorry, we had turned the corner really fast. I will uh, let people know ahead of time about what time I'll be doing it so uh, people can be prepared because I'm going to do a live stream for my birthday. So I look forward to seeing you all. All right, bye.